Hi, I'm Rob from RobinFoto.com and for this short little video I'm just going to show you something that if you're already into strobes or flashes or speed lights and gels you probably already know um, but for me it caused me to scratch my head for a little bit um, until I figured out a really simple solution that if I just looked on the net I would have probably found anyway but I thought I'd share this with you because it might save you some time and money um, to be honest so when you start getting into off-camera flash or on-camera flash one of the things that gets discussed quite a lot and one of the techniques that you, that you can use is the idea of balancing different types of light in terms of colors really they talk you, you can uh, you'll hear about color temperatures and things but basically one of the problems is that your strobe your flash or your speed light whatever you uh, care to call it the light that comes out of it is designed to be like daylight, like noon. Um, it's daylight balanced. But um, inside, in rooms for example, in here, um, the light just above there that you probably can't see, <laughs> they're tungsten bulbs. And the problem with tungsten bulbs is that compared to daylight, they're much oranger. So you get a difference in colour. Um, if you're in a room with fluorescent lighting, tubes and things, often they can be greener. And so you think, well, you know, well, what, does that, what does that mean? Well, the, the problem that you get is you can probably, um, if you try and imagine this, so you're in a room that's lit by um, flu uh, tungsten bulbs, so ordinary filament bulbs. And there's a lot of all these bulbs inside, but obviously it's too dark for it to do your portrait of, of the person you want to do, so you need to use a, you need to use a flash. So you sit them down on a chair and uh, you want to have the surrounding uh, room in the picture as well. You want to use the ambient light as well. So you set up your exposure uh, for that. And your flash fires and uh, your subject is nice and their, their skin tones look beautiful. But because your flash is balanced to daylight and your flash white balance is on, uh, sorry, your camera white balance is on, is on flash, they look great. But the, the surrounding room is now an incredible orange colour from all these tungsten bulbs. So it just, just looks wrong. So you're like, oh gosh, so what can I do? So then you think, right, okay, so what happens if I change my white balance on my camera to tungsten? So all of a sudden, what will that will then do is that will then cool down all the tungsten lights. So the background will look great, but the person's turned blue because your flash is still firing out like daylight. Well, the answer are gels. And all gels are, um, it's a bit of an American term, really, gel. Um, they're, they're really coloured plastic filters um, that are like little bits of cellophane or see-through um, plastic um, that you can fit on the front of your, front of your uh, flash. So let me just take one out of here. So let's take this blue one out. So let's put this... See if I put that over there, I put that over the front of the thing. So there we go. So I should have probably gone a little bit blue now. You see. So imagine. So what these things do is they change the colour of your flash. Um, and you think, well, what's the point of that? Well, the idea, therefore, is to is to balance the light. So let's go back to our problem of our subject who we're lighting with flash in a room where the ambient light is tungsten. So it's, so it's very very orange. So what we do is we take our flash and we add an orange filter onto the front. So the flash now is the same colour as the tungsten lights. We then set the white balance on our camera to tungsten. And so we balance our flash with the surrounding lights and everything will look nice. The tungsten lights will make everything look normal and our tungsten balance flash will then, will then uh, make our skin tones on our subject look, look good. So that's kind of the theory, that's why you do it um, on a basic level. The other thing you might want to do it is for artistic reasons. You might want to change the colour of a background. You might want a nice funky red, blue, orange background or you might want to change the look of something. You know, you just, might, you just want to change the colour of the light that comes out of your strobe or, or, your, or your flash. One of, the, one of the kits you'll often read about is this Roscoe Strobis Collection set, um, which is this fantastic set of about, I think there's about 50 different gels in here. You get multiples of the same one, like four CTOs, quarter CTOs, etc. And then you get some individual ones as well. 
but the problem when you, when you get it is that you get these little bits of plastic um, let me put that kit down now and you get, you, you get your little bit of plastic and then and you get your flash and you put them on the front and you're like well wait a minute you know how am I meant to, how is this meant to fix on because there's not enough of the um, of the gel to go around to the edge of the, the flash to put like an elastic band around it now what you can buy and oh let me just go back a little bit so this is about 10 pound on eBay normally it's not very expensive so again on the eBay you can buy various flash holders uh, sorry f uh, filter holders and often you might find the strobist uh, Roscoe kit sold with a, with a filter holder but then they generally tend to be about 10 pounds too so it's all of a sudden wait a minute if you had a say I don't know a three or a four flash setup where you wanted to balance the light on all the flashes or maybe have different colors all of a sudden it becomes very expensive you've got these cheap gels but they're costing you to put on each flash so what do you do well this is what I did and this is what lots of people have done on the internet is that you take your plain little gel your little filter and you add to it here's some I've prepared earlier and what you do is you take your gel and you can probably just about see on this see I've added tabs onto the sides and all they are is just uh, sellotape two bits of sellotape on each side and then what I've also done you might just be able to read it I've put what, what the gel is so for example in this one I've put quarter CTO so what this filter is is a quarter colour temperature orange and it's a general purpose filter that you should probably put on your flash whenever you're taking pictures of people because it warms the skin tone slightly it gives them you know a slight it doesn't make them turn them brown doesn't make them look like they've got a suntan but it just makes them look a little bit healthier and then once you've got these magic tabs on which probably take all of 30 seconds for each gel you can then just put an elastic band around your flash and there we have our gel fixed onto the front of our flash. Now, it may look a bit Heath Robinson, it may look a little bit uh, ad hoc, but there's a reason for that as well, <laughs> kind of. You don't want a snug fit between the flash head and the gel. You don't want the gel right up against the flash like that. I don't know whether you can see that or not, but you don't want it right up against it. Because what will happen is your, your flash at full power or even quarter power can generate a lot of heat and it will burn a hole in the gel or the gel will melt and stick to the flash and leave you with a nasty mark on it which will obviously change the colour. So by having that little air gap you can see you might just be able to see there that stops your gel getting damaged now remember as well by having tabs on your flashes you can mix and match your gel so you could have a couple of CTOs quarter CTOs um, and you can you can change all sorts of things that way and by having little tabs on you know exactly what you're going now the next kind of step especially if you've got the Roscoe Strobis collection is you get an awful lot of colours in there so the next thing I did was really um, go through and I tabbed up the most popular colours that I would be using so um, I did a, um, three uh, quarter CTOs because um, the maximum I'll probably ever use is three flashes but but, uh, but three uh, quarter CTOs three um, full colour temperature oranges um, for balancing tungsten and I put the, all those ones in a little sealed bag like so so that's really nice and easy to get at because trying to thumb through this thing to try and find gels is, is damn near impossible and then what I also did was then I've got an, another separate bag where in here I've got my uh, plus greens which is used for uh, balancing fluorescence and then I've got some other colours as well um, that I probably might use for special effects so I've got things like um, uh, there's like a nice nice but there's blues there um, full blues plus greens and there's another one actually I've got so let me just grab uh, where's it gone oh, I think I might have left that upstairs but you kind of get the idea you kind of separate your gels into different kind of groups and keep them in plant different different bags so that you can get at them you know quickly when you need to do the business when you need to um, color balance your flash 
Now, I'm not saying that everybody has to colour balance flash. You know, you don't have to. You know, it's a bit fiddly. But what it does do, it does get you out of those tricky situations where you spot that the white balance um, the, is incorrect. This tends to affect professionals more than amateurs, because as amateurs, I mean, I'm not, not really that bothered, but if you're in a professional situation where you say lighting an interior of a building for a client, you know, they want the colours to look right, otherwise they're just going to go, well, wait a minute, you know, that, that sofa isn't that colour of uh, blue, it's slightly greener, and that sort of thing. And that's where gels really come into their own. So there we go. That's kind of a quick how-to to make your strobist uh, Roscoe collection of gels a little bit more useful just by adding simple bits of sellotape and uh, little uh, tabs of paper just telling you what type of uh, gel they are. My name's Rob from RobNumphoto.com. Thanks for watching.